Kennedy rightly said, a man may die, nations may rise and fall, but an idea lives on. Ideas have endurance without death. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the International Center Goa and Goa University, I warmly welcome you to the award ceremony of the second edition of the International Center Goa, Goa University essay competition, which celebrates and lauds ideas and is aptly called Ideas Unleashed. The second edition of International Center Goa, Goa University essay competition, Ideas Unleashed 2016, is ably supported by Sri Dataraj Salgaonkar, the chairman of BM Salgaonkar Institute of International Hospitality Education. It was launched in August 2016 by the Vice Chancellor of Goa University, Professor Varun Sahani, and President of the Board of Trustees, International Center Goa, Mr. Yatin Kakodkar. The topic for this essay competition was Raising the Standard of Higher Education in Goa, Challenges and Solutions. The event witnessed an overwhelming response. In all, there were 100 entries which were received from 28 colleges all over the state. A distinguished panel of judges have painstakingly worked to select the best. And today, we will be rewarding and awarding the top three winners of Ideas Unleashed 2016 at this momentous awards ceremony at the hands of our Honorable Chief Guest. But at the very outset, it is appropriate to formally welcome the distinguished luminaries and guests. And to do this honor, I invite Mr. Yatin Kakodkar, President of International Center Goa, to deliver the welcome note. Honorable Governor of Goa, Srimati Nidula Sinaji, Vice Chancellor of Goa University, Dr. Varun Sani, Director of ICG, Dr. Krishna, Distinguished Educationists, Students, Ladies and Gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you for award function of the second edition of Ideas Unleashed, ICG Goa University SA Competition 2016. Raising the Standard of Higher Education in Goa, Challenges and Solutions, supported by the VM Sargampa Institute of International Hospitality Education. The second edition is in some ways a logical sequel to the first edition, which was about raising Goa's Human Development Index. Human Development Index includes three subjects, namely healthcare, education, and standard of living. In the second edition, our topic is education, one of the three elements of HDI. The objective of the essay competition is to encourage ideational thinking amongst the students of Goa and to get them interested in public policy issues. In the second edition, we want the students to think about higher education in the state of Goa. In addition, the practical benefit of the present edition of the essay competition is that since students are consumers of higher education, this initiative will be more than just an ideational exercise. The essays can provide very useful user feedback to the authorities in charge of higher education in the state of Goa. The essays have the potential to provide new solutions to old problems. To do that, we hope the essays will generate new ideas for improving higher education in the state of Goa and will display critical and original thinking, solid arguments and offer innovative solutions and creative, even out-of-the-box ideas which will inspire decision makers in government of Goa, academics, policy makers, media and civil society. The choice of education was deliberate and we hope that this subject will share space in Goan public discourse alongside issues such as Goa Karpon, special status, tourism, casinos, regional plan and mining. It is heartening to note that our Chief Minister of Goa, Sri Manohar Parikar, has announced in the recent budget an increase in the allocation of funds to education from 3.8% to 6% of GDP. 
We received 54 essays in the first edition and I am happy to announce that the number has increased to 100 in the second edition. We are thankful to all the essay writers for their enthusiastic response, but we can give awards only to the top three essays. To help us select the top three essays from a shortlist of nine, we were assisted by a very diligent and meticulous three-member jury consisting of Dr. Kiran Budkuli, former professor and head of department, English, Goa University, Dr. Koshit Tarakan, professor, department of philosophy, Goa University, and Dr. Jyoti D. Power, associate professor, department of computer science and technology, Goa University, who went through nine screen essays with a truth poem. We appreciate the fine work done by the jury. Despite all the good ideas, no project can go forward without support which has come to this project from VM Sargonka and Brothers Private Limited Hospital. And we are grateful to them. As I conclude my welcome address, let me add that Ideas Unleashed is an ongoing project and we are confident that with the support of the academic community, it will grow from strength to strength in the following years. We are confident that more than 100 students will participate in the future. We are confident that the essays will get better and better every year. We are confident that Ideas Unleashed will create a culture of ideational thinking amongst the youth of Goa which will benefit our society. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No army can withstand the strength of an idea whose time has come. These words by Victor Hugo highlight the value of our central theme of this evening, ideas unleashed in the context of higher education. It is therefore highly appropriate that Professor Varun Sahani, Vice Chancellor Goa University, offers his introductory insights on this occasion. I now invite Professor Sahani to kindly address the august gathering. Our chief guest for uh, this, this important award ceremony, the Honorable Governor of Goa and Chancellor of Goa University, Dr. Midhila Sinaji, Mr. Yatin Kakotkar, President, International Center Goa, Dr. Pushkar, Director, International Center Goa, the distinguished jury members of this, comp uh, of this uh, competition, Professor Koshi Tarakan and Dr. Jyoti Pawar, the deans of the various faculties of Goa University, principals of the colleges of Goa University, faculty colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am delighted to be here uh, at the award ceremony of, uh, of a competition that uh, was inaugurated uh, uh, literally I think uh, must be about 10 or 12 days after I had landed in Goa. Uh, it was probably the first uh, public sort of uh, event that I was involved in. Uh, and I must say that uh, I have come in the uh, ensuing months to deeply value the profound partnership that uh, Goa University has with International Center Goa. In all sorts of ways, uh, uh, big and small, uh, we, we, we complement uh, each other beautifully uh, as, as organizations, as institutions. And uh, I think it's a, it's a link, a partnership, a collaboration that uh, I will do everything possible to strengthen in the coming years. Uh, one of the most important elements of, that has emerged of this is the uh, is the whole idea about organizing an essay competition, uh, Ideas Unleashed. And I think in particular, as uh, Sri Yatin Kakotkar has already mentioned to us, the idea of raising standards of higher education in Goa, I think is an NSU that is pertinent both in terms of its relation to, uh, to human development uh, but also, of course, in relation uh, to what is, for many of us, a core concern. I'd like to recognize, of course, uh, the presence uh, of, uh, of Mr. Salgaonkar, without whose uh, support uh, we would not really have been able to organize this. We are very grateful for the, for the support given uh, by the Salgaonkar Institute of International Hospitality. Um, it seems to me that the core challenge for the higher education sector in our state but also in our country 
is about how we can, in a most optimum way, blend tradition and innovation. Uh, both are, I think, in the university sector, in the tertiary education sector, extremely important. Uh, we need innovation desperately in our systems and in our institutions. But while we think about new ways of doing things, um, and of course also doing some new things, uh, we need to be very conscious about the fact that universities in particular are institutions of tradition. Tradition is extremely important in a university. Uh, Goa University is uh, going to, in just a few days from now, uh, you know, be celebrating its 29th convocation, uh, where we will be, where we will, we will have the uh, unparalleled honor of having the Honorable President of India as our chief guest. Uh, that for us is exactly the sort of element of tradition that is extremely important in the tertiary sector. So while we go about our, our business of trying to raise standards in higher education, I think to some extent one of the fundamental challenges really is about how we can balance these two imperatives. The imperative of innovation on the one hand and the imperative of tradition on the other. Along with that, we have to try to find ways of guaranteeing access to quality and affordable education to all independent in some ways of all constraints, whether they be social, economic, geographic, physical, and indeed, I would say today, even mental. We need to be able to think about how we can provide affordable reskilling opportunities for all, given the ever-changing requirements of the job market today. Stable jobs lasting over lifetimes are really becoming very rapidly a thing of the past. In a society which, thanks to the advances in the biomedical sciences, a society that is becoming a longer living and aging society, I think it's also going to be a real challenge for us to provide access to second careers and lifelong learning to all those who want them. In other words, the demographic of our user community can no longer be seen by those of us who are service providers in the tertiary sector, universities and other institutions of higher learning, to the age group 18 to 28. We really need to go way beyond that and think about people well into their 60s and 70s as also people who can use our services. We need to link industry and user organizations to university systems without, I think, in some ways, that integration between the world of study and the world of work. Universities, institutions of higher learning are going to become increasingly irrelevant in the world of employment. And that has become one of our core challenges. We need to think about ways in which we can mainstream vocational education, not least of all because it is through that process that we will be able to bring much needed skills training into our university system. We have a system today that privileges knowledge base over skill sets and one way in which we can overcome that is if we actually mainstream vocational education. We need to, in terms of our examination systems, have a really root and branch reform we need to be able to evaluate a much wider range of talents, skills and knowledge in a continuous manner. And the challenge has got to be to see exams not so much as gatekeeping exercises, you know, thou shall not pass approach, much more as an opportunity for learners to improve their competence level. And that is a fundamental philosophical transformation of examinations. That is the process that needs to begin. We need to reorganize knowledge itself in order to break down these disciplinary barriers. We need to recognize that the disciplines that exist in our system are really the product of a particular time and place, 18th century, late 18th century Europe to be precise, and frankly are fundamentally irrelevant when it comes to knowledge in the 21st century in our latitudes, in our location. Uh, we need to build modular education packages so that a student and start learning something somewhere, take that, go somewhere completely different and continue learning without having to start from scratch again. We need to integrate software into more traditional learning and teaching practices, developing open content, data and resources to promote creativity and self-expression. And I think most important of all, and with this point I'll end, but I think it is 
to my mind emerging as one of our core challenges is building pedagogies to transmit knowledge that exists in living traditions and social practices parampara in our in our in our tradition how do we access the knowledge that exists in our living tradition and particularly marginal knowledge tradition not just traditions relating to classical and high culture but also the popular culture of the people of groups that have traditionally been marginalized tribal formations etc the wealth of knowledge that exists there in their existing social practices how do them how do we bring that all into the world of study i'm looking forward very much to the announcement of the